What's up, everyone? How you guys and gals doing this morning? Don't forget to join the Insane Throttle Members Only Club for exclusive content at 9.20 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday with myself in China Dow. Also, catch the live immediately following this video. I had this story that popped out of the New York Post. And it had to do with Jay Dobbins. If you don't know who Jay Dobbins is, he was the ATF agent that infiltrated the Hells Angels. And I, I would say his own uh, agency turned their back on him. They kicked him out to the curve. Anyway, he gave an interview to the New York Post. And in there, he talks about how women are treated within that club. Now, I would have to argue this is club-wide type of stuff. And I was actually surprised, okay? I don't get surprised a lot because I see all kinds of stuff in these uh, news articles and this scene, the whole nine yards. But he was pretty honest. I was like, holy cow, man, what the heck happened here? Maybe there's somebody that's finally coming out and saying some stuff that might actually be true. Like how club members, they do a lot of charity work. It's not all on, you know, the entire club about being criminals, blah, 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 blah. But the one thing he talked about was the women and the different classes of women in the motorcycle scene or club scene. Now, we know how the news media is going to react to this type of stuff. It's like a house is on fire. They're screaming, screaming, screaming. You know how it works. But in the club scene, it's a lot different. And hopefully those that are independent or, you know, thinking about joining a club, you'll understand the different levels. Now, what am I talking about different levels? It's actually funny. I was talking about this on the last episode because China Dow blew up because I did an interview. And in that interview, he said that old ladies are passed around. And that's not true. But it depends on the status or position, if you will. Now, you do have your old ladies, which are usually property of, ladies of, whatever you want to call them. They're the ones that are the wives and girlfriends of the member. Then, you have those that we in the Midwest call pitch chasers. They will do anything and everything they can to get a patch, including doing Billy Joe, Bob Thornton, and all that kind of stuff in the club. They just do it, you pass them, and it's done. That's why they're called what they're called, patch chasers. Now, this is something that happens in the scene. I'm not going to even try to cover that up, but you have to be, you have to know the two types. And if you're uneducated, an article like this would be like, wow, what do you do? What? This still happens? They're Neanderthals. It's because you don't understand. And if you look at a lot of stories in the media, they really don't understand. So let's go to this article right here out of the New York Post. I really like the New York Post because it's a very old newspaper and it actually tries to shoot down the middle. And I do have to say though, that a lot of them don't understand what our lifestyle is all about. Now this is by Andrew Court, uh, undercover agent exposes Hell's Angels sex rules, a violent price to pay. And that is actually a quote within the article of violent price to pay, and you'll see why. That it don't only apply to the club scene, but everyday life. Now, a retired special agent who infiltrated the Hells Angel biker gang as part of a two-year undercover operation is exposing the organization's strict sex rules. It goes on to tell the story of Dobbins, and then that 
when he got in, he quickly learned that there were rules about relationships with women, and a failure to follow them could have very violent consequences. Now, let's be honest. It's just not motorcycle clubs. And like I said, it's everyday life. If somebody is on your old lady hitting on them, you don't have to be a club or not. You're going to get pretty violent. You know what I mean? You're going to try to say, hey, this one's with me. And if they go back and say, give me the big middle finger, you're knocking them over the head with the beer bottle. This motorcycle Madhouse on Spotify and iTunes Radio. So that's in everyday life, not just clubs. Okay, with regards to women, there's a hierarchy that takes place, Dobbins said, which is true. Discussing the gangbangs. <laughs> Come on, are you jealous? Man, some of them. Anyway, there are old ladies who are the wives and girlfriends of members and they're kind of at the top of the chain. You better not get caught trying to mess around with a member's wife or girlfriend because there is a violent price to pay. A lot of clubs have a bylaw written right there for the members. Hey, do not touch that old lady. You do not mess around with the brother's old lady. But here is something a lot of people, and again, I'm like flabbergasted at this. Yeah, a true article somewhat. Anyway, you know, some things, other things not. But at least there's trying to be a middle ground here. And it goes on to say, however, he revealed that there were also Hell's Angel groupies who often appeared at the club clubhouse. We call them patch chasers here in the Midwest. West, that's what we call them. Quote, they moved from member to member to member. And that's what he stated, implying that there was no bad blood between bikers who slept with the same women. Now, I always say, this ain't cookies and ice cream. It's not the Boy Scouts. You're out there having fun, you're enjoying life, you're, you know, you're being free, you're doing what you want to do. And yeah, patches from a club attract women that will do anything and to get their property of patch. Let's just put it that way. And stating ladies of or saying prop let's just say property patch. They want that patch. So they're going to try to attach whoever they can. They're going to go from guy to guy to guy. They're going to do what they think they need to do to get that patch. So it's nothing unusual within the scene for that to happen. But again, you have to make sure you understand there's two types of deals right there. There's two types of classes of women within this scene. Now... Dobbins didn't dis disclose whether sex was allowed inside the clubhouse, but said parties were a frequent occurrence at the chapter. <laughs> Meaning he ain't gonna let it out, but yeah, you know what it is. Uh, you know, I have to say, hey, Jay, man, you know, I've contacted you, try to get you uh, to come on the show. You know, what the hell, man? Give me a hit back here. You know, I do fair interviews. I do tough, firm and consistent type of interviews. Some would say, hey, you know, it's an ambush when it really ain't. It's just, answers. I ask tough questions. I do tough follow-ups. So, come on the show. Anywhere, way, he goes on to say in an in interview, the crime fighter claimed that the Hells Angels are a complex organization made up of members with diverse lifestyles and interests. Oh my God, what the hell's going on? Hollywood is actually like surprised because usually this don't happen. You know, the media gets a hold of them. Next thing you know, you know, they make their thing. The cops make their thing. Now, it goes on to say there's a myth that every Hells Angel member is a drug addict, he stated. Then he goes on to say some were fitness freaks. They ate well. They got the rest. They didn't drink. They didn't smoke. 
to decline those things wasn't necessarily a false alarm. Now, let's admit here, okay? Let's admit here. The Angels got some big boys. You know, you if you're going to go up against some of these big boys, you know, the Angels, Outlaws, Mongols, they all have them, Bandinos. They got some monsters in there. You need Mike Tyson beside you. But they're really into the healthy lifestyle. And then he went on to say, he also explains that while many members were mixed up in illegal activities, there are chapters, and he didn't say gang, it was them, that run a fairly clean business and aren't involved in a lot of crime. Now, I'll take the quote here. There's a myth that every Hells Angel member is a drug addict. They make positive contributions to society that shouldn't be taken away from them. Now, if he would have said something like that as a cop man, they would have fired his ass in a heartbeat. You know, and he goes on to say, he added that many of the chapters involved themselves in community service, donating blood to local hospitals, and participating in toy drives. Then he goes on and on. His uh, operation resulted in 55 members and associates. Not all 55 were members, while 16 of the members were indicted on racketeering charges. So it's kind of a middle-of-the-road assessment here from somebody that infiltrated the club. But I do want you to know, two classes of women within the club scene, maybe even three, one, don't touch the old ladies. Two, those are groupies or patch chasers. Have at it. That's basically the way it works. And unless you're in a club, you'll never understand that. I'm sorry, but you got to go join a club to learn about that kind of stuff. Got to do it. Anyway, I'm going to go to the second half of the show. Again, don't forget to join the Members Only Club. You to join on Spotify or YouTube. I'm going to go to the second half with China Dow right after this. Rock on. Join the Insane Throttles Members Only Club. Two ways to join over on Spotify and YouTube. Insane Throttle Biker News' channel, by the way. With your membership, you get exclusive content Monday through Friday. China China Dow's on there with me. Y'all love China Dow. Also, you get an invite to the yearly Rumble in the Woods where we get together, have parties, have fun. So make sure you join the Insane Throttles Members Only Club over on Spotify or YouTube. Rock on. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on Spotify and iTunes Radio.